Welcome to Fun with Drilling Engineering. When drilling deep boreholes, it can happen that the borehole becomes unstable and collapses, and then the drill string gets stuck in the hole. In that case, you can be happy if you have drilling jars installed in your drill string. The function of a jar is a bit difficult to explain, but today we will try. If you look at the outer parts of the drilling jar, you will recognize the outer tube, the housing. The outer tube is filled with oil. In the outer tube, we also find a smaller anvil built into it. Below the anvil, there's also a restrictor sleeve. These are the outer parts of the jar. But there are also some inner parts, which comprise of a hammer and a shaft. You can see it here behind me now. If we look at the entire assembly, we notice that the hammer with the shaft is placed in the housing in such a way that the hammer is located in the restrictor sleeve. The picture on the left, as you can see, is just a rough sketch, which is used to explain the working principle. A real jar looks like the tool that you can see in the middle. The drilling jar is placed in the drill string somewhere in the upper half of the drill collars, as you can see here. Under normal drilling conditions, you don't need the jars. But should your drill string get stuck for any reason in your borehole, then the jar will be very useful to free the string again. First, you have to unlock the jar somehow by mechanical or hydraulic means. Yes. Then you apply tension to the string by lifting it up at the upper end, using the draw works of the drilling rig. So the string is locked in the borehole at its lower end, and at the top end of the string, it is pulled upward by the traveling block. This results in some tension, and therefore the armor would like to slide up in the restrictor sleeve to reduce this tension. But as you can see, there is only very little space between the inner diameter of the restrictor sleeve and the outer diameter of the hammer. If the hammer moves upwards, some of the hydraulic oil in the jar needs to flow downwards through the narrow annulus. Of course, this is a very slow process. And that's why the hammer initially moves very slowly in the restrictor sleeve. But when the hammer finally exits the restrictor sleeve, it is free to move and hits the upper anvil with free power. This means the jar has fired. You can hear and feel the impact on the drilling rig at the surface. In the best case, we hope that this impact has released our drill string. Otherwise, you have to close the jar and fire it again. Jars can fire upwards or downwards, but I don't want to go into that now. But you can see the process of firing once more in this animation here. You see how the piston moves slowly first and then gives a quick and heavy impact like this. Of course, everybody is happy if the drill string is released and the drilling can be continued. If you want to know exactly how such a jar works, then come to our lecture, Basics of Drilling Engineering, here in Freiburg. We look forward to welcoming you. Look off.